Oh my god, I do not know what to say right now. Seriously. Seriously, Scott? Seriously, Scott? Ah. Scott always ruins our plans, we know that, and we've known that ever since the release of, say, FNAF 3? FNAF 2, maybe? I don't know. I'm, I'm really struggling to think right now, because I'm in a state of, um, of kind of half depression, half anger, if you can hear in my voice. You probably can hear in my voice. Um, so basically, my plans were all ruined by Scott. Um, thanks a lot, Scott. Uh, I was planning to do Five Nights Until Ultimate Custom Night, which is an event that I was hosting where I uploaded loads of loads of videos, loads of FNAF videos, um, for five nights leading up to the release of Ultimate Custom Night. That plan got demolished, and the reason it did get demolished is because he, uh, Scott Cawthon, was finished with the game and he put the release date earlier rather than the original release date. So now it's on, on the 27th, or in literally a day. So, I don't know what to think, because I planned all these videos, and I'm going to upload them like usual, like usual uploads. Um, I have a feeling I'll, I'll upload loads of um, Ultimate Custom Night videos as well. However, I wrote so much for all these videos. I planned out these videos amazingly well. I, I kind of hate to say that, because I might be jinxing myself. But, um, I wrote scripts for literally every single video. And then I got to one video in particular. One video in particular that struck me down. It really taught me down. And guess what? That video was none other than the FNAF timeline. Yes, I was making a secret FNAF timeline. And, I mean... I wasn't really planning to release it during Five Nights Until Ultimate Custom Night because I know I need longer on it. Um, I wouldn't have been, have been mad if I didn't release it during the event because I know I need to spend quite a long time on a timeline and that's quite that's kind of ironic. Um, I know I, I need to spend quite a lot of time writing a timeline and actually getting all the information together and so I wasn't really planning on releasing it during the event. However, I was writing a script for the timeline and guess how far I got. I got nowhere. I wrote about 10 words of the actual like timeline part, not including the intro. I wrote about 10 words and then I got stuck. I got really stuck and it may sound like I'm really stupid or I'm an idiot or I'm terrible at making FNAF theories you can say that all you want because I probably am. But um, the, the you can say all that, but it's really difficult. It takes so much time. But after writing those ten words, my mind was blown. And the reason my mind was blown is because there's so much information. It literally gives me a headache. There's so many variables to the story, and so I thought. Let's take it right, right, right back to the start. FNAF 1. When FNAF 1 was released, Scott didn't really plan on any lore. He based the whole story, as MatPat said, he based the whole story around this event that happened in 1993, um, uh, where there was a killer and he, there were five people and all the events matched up perfectly. You should go and watch MatPat's first FNAF theory for that video. Um, but he based it around this story and he didn't plan to have any lore in it. So we were all fine with that. We, we knew there was something going on with missing children, of course, and we could relate that to the animatronics because there was five missing children, five animatronics. That's how we did it. Then FNAF 2 came out where Scott was more about the lore. You know, we we were introduced to some characters, we were introduced to Purple Guy, and we were introduced to a whole range of animatronics, and we knew that this was a prequel sequel. However, something has been bugging me to say that it wasn't a prequel sequel, and it hasn't been solved yet. Yes, I know, things haven't been solved from when FNAF 2 was the latest game out in the franchise. The one thing that I can't 
I can't understand, I can't get my head around, is the fact that the Withered animatronics are the FNAF 1 animatronics. However, the Withered animatronics are Withered versions of those animatronics. But how can they be Withered if they come before the, F the FNAF 1 event? If you know what I mean. So you've got the FNAF 1 animatronics and you've got the Withereds. They're the same animatronics as we see. But if the Withered animatronics are Withered, surely that should mean FNAF 2 should come out after FNAF 1. But it can't because Phone Guy dies in FNAF 1, so he can't be in FNAF 2. They can't take place in the same time either because the Withereds are the same as the FNAF 1 animatronics. So, you can't you can't get your mind around it. There's too many variables, as I keep saying. Let's move on to FNAF 3. FNAF 3 was where he really started to get into the lore, and where he wanted to end the story. And proof for that is the fact that he ended this game with a fire that burnt down the establishments, and that was the end of the game. However, he left all, the, all these minigames in. He had this Chica's Party World minigame, where I still don't know what this means. There's this weird balloon boy tree thing where loads of people pray or something. And then there's Mangle's Quest where there's this puppet figure that we still haven't solved. Why is there this puppet here? Why is Mangle involved in this? And why did Scott carry on making games? Because this is my next point. Although he burnt down the establishment and that's the end of the story, Scott changed his mind. And this is why FNAF is unsolvable. In FNAF 4, the next game, he decided to go to Dream Theory. Four games, one story. The one story is the Dream Theory. Everything is just a dream. And that's proof with why is the tiny toy Chica missing her beak. Why? Because it's all a dream. Everything that we see is its own dream. And that's where Scott ended the franchise. That's where Scott planned to end, end, uh, end the fran franchise. But he didn't. Because he came out with Sister Location. Where so many things were revealed. Where, you know, the bite victim is now Crying Child. Crying Child is now Michael Afton. Michael Afton is in fact a purple guy that is not the purple guy that we've seen before. And then FNAF 6 came out where a new colour, orange, was introduced, who apparently is purple guy. So we got a purple and orange guy and a different purple guy. And oh my god, my mind is being blown. And the thing with FNAF 6 is there is still so many things that are left unsolved. Where the hell are we? Why the hell uh, is there these gravestones? And we have solved these gravestones pretty much. We know who these gravestones are. But then there are people all over Reddit, all over YouTube, all over Twitter, all over Instagram, all over Facebook, all ev over every single social media saying that because of the FNAF logbook, Cassidy is in fact the puppet. <sighs> and that's where I draw the line. Not even the community can agree with each other on any timeline whatsoever. If we're struggling on picking out who says it's me and assigning Cassidy to that animatronic and we're saying that that animatronic is the puppet, there's something very wrong because you know we are a community and we make theories we make theories on the franchise that I don't even think Scott has solved himself I think Scott has changed the story so much he doesn't even know where he's going with it and that is where you guys come into play I tried making the timeline and as I repeat I was 12 like 10 12 words in and couldn't carry on because there were too many variables so this is where you come in if you would like to help me make a timeline then do me a favor go to a website called discord 
download it or just log in and use the online browser. Um, log in, of course, and then join my server in the description. Once you join my server, you can chat to me all you want. You can chat to my community all you want. There's about 100 people in my Discord server at this moment in time. And we can all solve FNAF together if we try. But here's the thing. It's unsolvable right now. As I keep saying, there are too many variables that it cannot be solved. And hopefully, Scott is going to tie some loose ends with Ultimate Custom Night. And when Ultimate Custom Night comes out, that's where we start making the timeline. My throat is hurting so much. I think I got like a throat disorder or something. So I'm going to need to end this soon. I'm going to be shouting down the mic. So I'm sorry if you felt threatened during this whole thing. But that's why FNAF is unsolvable. There are too many, too many, too many variables. And you cannot put them all together. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you later. Goodbye.